There's like a private link that one. All right, so we are broadcasting Antonio's workshop. And go. So welcome everyone. This is the Mass Survival Tips Workshop that I'll be giving today. And you're, I'm going to give you like some tools, resources, some strategies that you can use in your math classes and possibly other classes as well. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about like math anxiety and math fears. So why do you think that's something that we should talk about? I don't know why I have that. I don't know why, but when it comes to the math, I, I know it, but then again, I think I just get on the it. Yeah. I think that we need to talk about it because it affects how you test and your grade in your class. Any other thoughts? Uh, I think for me it was uh, like a psychological thing. Yeah. Like um, failing before I take the class. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to make it. Yeah. And after I changed that thinking, a more like positive thing like, hey, I'm gonna do it, and it's like, hey, isn't that that's what yeah. makes the difference now that I don't, I'm not afraid of math anymore. I'm just doing it. Yeah. Taylor? Well, we're gonna start off by doing a uh, little called like a math timeline. So it looks like this. And basically, you start like a zero year, you number it based on grade level, like first grade, second grade, third grade, and you're gonna tell whether you have positive attitudes towards math or negative attitudes, and you're going to connect the dots, kind of like a graph, about how you're feeling towards math change. And then you're going to choose three of those points and like talk about it, like describe why you felt that way, you know, use some words that describe why you felt that way, I guess. Is there any questions? Do we really have to go far, that far back to first grade? Uh, you, can start <laughs> where, you can start wherever you want. In high school, yeah, you just need to be five.
I'll just give you guys one more minute to wrap up your thoughts. Okay, so now we're just going to briefly share our little timeline graph thing. So for mine, started got kind of negative, then it went positive, stayed positive for like a long time. Then it went back down again when I started like college, and then it went back up again as I'm nearing the end of my college career. And the three points I chose was in fourth grade, and I didn't understand it, and I hated it. <laughs> and then in seventh grade, I really liked it because my teacher you know, we did a lot of group work. I liked the way she taught the class. So I thought I really liked it. And then my third point was this one where I went down again when I was a sophomore in college. And the reason I didn't like it that much then because like test stress, like so much emphasis was placed on tests, there was like so much lecturing. I kind of missed like the group work from like, high school and stuff like that. That's my point. One, two, share there. My year was like, like peace, and I went back to like, uh, like middle school. Actually, it was, I don't remember much, but I, I wasn't too afraid of math, maybe yeah. because of the level. Yeah. It was something in high school that I had a big, uh, a big drop. I think I dropped pretty bad at the point where I almost repeated the year because of math. Yeah. But uh, all of a sudden, when I went back to college, I went like really high and I learned, I get confident. And then, I mean, I don't know, maybe the older you get, the less yeah. fear <laughs> you, you, you are. So I want to share that. Well, my, no, like you said, what, I was going to hear. But anyway, mine started out in elementary school. And, um, my sister and I, my middle sister, she got to the second. So the second sister, she and uh, I was going to school. The teacher brought me out of. Uh, they were having math in her class, and the teacher brought me brought me out of my regular class to have a competition with my sister. And I didn't want her to fail in front of her peers, so I failed, and I was. I haven't been able to shape that. Yeah. And then coming, um, when I had to take algebra and all that, I was like on shaky ground uh, when I was trying to get my social degree. And then after that, that that time and zone, it seemed like it just stood there yeah. and I wasn't able to move. But now that I'm here, it's, it's no longer holding me down. And uh, doing statistics here, I, I flunked the first time. I didn't have the right teachers for the second time. But the second time I took it over, I got a B. So that made me feel good. And now that I did that, it's still like I'm shaking that my past off. It's no longer going with me through my life no more. Did that make sense? Yeah. And I didn't write all that yeah. down. Because <laughs> 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 I've been writing for days. You verbalized it. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, mine looks like this, and my graph goes along right here, and then up again, and then back down. But I started at high school, and it was pretty steady at high school. I, I've always enjoyed math because I like working with numbers. And one of my points is the 12th grade. And I think that once I graduated from high school, I had like a basic knowledge, and I know I enjoyed it a lot. And then down here, my second point is my freshman year in college which I think that I went back before I came back to school. This is my first time at college, and there's that huge gap of like 25 years. 
And I think I was nervous about a lot of different things, not just math anxiety, but every semester almost, I've been here in college for six years now, um, I had to take some type of math class. And beginning as a freshman, it was pre-algebra, and then college algebra, I believe. But that one probably made me the most nervous of all because of everything else and having anxiety. And then my, my third point went up really high because I was more comfortable and here on campus a little longer and trying to get rid of those anxieties. And then the current one is just down a little bit more only because it's harder the managerial statistics and it's something new. I've never taken a statistics class before, but I still enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Sure. I've always enjoyed math. Mine much stays up all the way. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, my first one is seventh grade. That's when I started in algebra one. Mm -hmm. That was great. I loved it. Uh, I've always liked math. And then my next was in 12th grade when I did AP calculus, and I was also good at that, so the AP test did good. And third point was just last night when I took Cal 3, I felt even better. I loved it. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess I kind of fluctuate. Um, so my tree was full of like the best math, you know, like easy number stuff. Um, I like solving like algebra problems, like simple, like math work. But then in my school, like, um, started getting like longer. Um, it was more like these other more complicated math problems, and then uh, it's been a while I've taken math. But my, uh, my freshman year, and it was all like statistics and probability and like any type stuff. So I really yeah. Mine's like his. Mine's pretty straight. <laughs> I always like math, and the, one of my points is when I first started here, I thought it was gonna be harder. I was a little intimidated because it was college math. But it, it was pretty easy. Or, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. That's, that's what I'm trying to get to. So I've never been really not had, I've never had not had fun with math. So that's pretty cool. I didn't expect so much positivity for math. So <laughs> I kind of threw off like a lot of the stuff. But you can still learn some new stuff, you know, I guess. Okay, so I'm passing you. Um, about math anxiety. Give me one or two. Not just one. So what is math anxiety? Does anyone want to read like the definition? Defined as yeah. a feeling of attention that interferes with the manipulation of numbers and solving mathematical problems in ordinary life and academic situations. Then yeah, that's just the source I got it from. So when do people begin to feel that anxiety? So if you see on the little graph here, you see that it's the university level that most people feel afraid of math. Which I thought was surprising since I thought most people like would hate it like in high school level. Because that's like work. Like what's your name? Yeah. Selena said that things get more complicated. So that was pretty surprising. What are some of the factors that cause math anxiety? We have self-confidence, so being concerned with failure. Peter saying it's easy, so others might be saying this is so easy, and you're like, no, it's not. Like, <laughs> I don't get this. And also, Peter's having negative attitudes, so they're like, this is dumb. You're also going to have that same attitude towards it. And then stressing to get the right answer, so instead of focusing on the process to get there, you just focus on getting the one solution, which true, yeah, and then the teaching style might not match That's your it. needs, yeah. You know, uh, there's tests and exams, so like the stress related to that. You know, this a lot of classes in college are mostly like the test and exam are the only thing that factors into your grade, and mm -hmm. there's like no other things. But in higher level classes, surprisingly, you get more positive stuff because that, and then the speed of the class is it going too fast? Or maybe even too slow. Like, it just depends. So then the research shows that the top shows us that the top reasons for the causes of math anxiety are the teaching style. Again, which is a lot. <laughs> this is like a lot of what I just said previously. No, that's true. Because yeah. like I said, when I first took statistics, it seemed to me that the people that was there and it was keeping up with her, they either major in that class or they. 
she said that she hadn't been in school for a while. I wasn't in school for a while because of us over an accident, and I'm trying to come back. So I got all this stuff going on. Yeah. So you just look at, like, even though, like, I see it's something, like, easy that you're learning, mm -hmm. the teacher sucks at, like, explaining it and makes it, like, harder than what it is. Yeah. So if you want to share slots, you can always feel free to take them. And then lack of knowledge. So you, maybe your high school didn't teach pre-calculus, but um, someone else took calculus, AP calculus in their high school. So everyone comes from different levels. So that's what, one of the reasons that affects that. Self-confidence is a huge one. Like we talked about failure and no engagement. Like, why am I even taking this class? What's the point of it? True. And then before I flip it over, what are some of your strategies to get over your bad worries? I know most of you have like positive attitudes, but like, how do you go into a math class? Now I go in more, I'm more confident. And like I said, coming to TRIO, it made a difference. Before, I would go in dreading and hoping that the class was melt away. Yeah. But now, I don't. I like. I like numbers like the rest of them say. I guess that's why we're here. We like numbers, but like the teaching style for me. If I can't connect with the teacher, I, I'm just lost. Period. Yeah. And if she give a long explanation, like you said, when it's real easy, my mind is still on that long explanation she's talking about, and then she's writing on the board. By the time she finished, I'm just lost. So I like that coming here made a difference. Mm -hmm. I agree. Getting that extra support and putting computers helps. Something, something that I did, and I learned that the very first class, I knew that it was going to be a good semester or a bad semester, depending on the way the teacher is done. Mm -hmm. The teacher, the teacher teach. style. So, right away after the class, I was like, okay, I went and talked to the professor and, and tell her, you know what, I'm not. I don't understand this right away. Yeah. Is there any other way that you could teach, or you could teach me, or you can? So that way, I, I, it helps me to develop confidence and instead of be frustrated the whole semester because yeah. I don't get it. You know what I mean? So that's important to uh, at least know if, if there is another way to to get it. Everybody learns in different ways. Right. You know, you might use your fingers. You might. Use, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, for me, that's, that was very. I mean, that communication with the professor. Because sometimes we don't mm. communicate. Yeah. We just complain and we don't go yeah. and say, "Hey, I think I." You know. Any other comments? So in the back, we just have more strategies. You know, practice, getting help, studying, and doing your homework. Really self confidence and just relaxing. Sometimes we just need a break. Math. So I know most of you again you don't like feel that stressed about stressed out about maths, but you shouldn't really stress out that much about it. Most of the time it has like, nothing to do with you. It's like just the way that you have been taught. Like Selena said, like they could explain it easier, but they just do it longer. Um it's just how math has been taught over the years. It's just like lecturing, memorizing facts, simple comprehension problems. It's like it's been taught this way for so long that everyone's like fed up with it. And I'm like the math wars, I know that's like in education, that's like the change that's happening. It's not like something massive, but like um, it's like changing the way that we teach from like the 1990s. Like instead of just lecturing, they want to like do like, um, like you do more problem solving type of thing. And some things you can do in your own time is just relax, meditate, listen to music, calm yourself down. And you can boost your self-confidence by celebrating success or accomplishment, even if it's something so small, like, oh, I've got a 40 instead of the 37 I quit. I mean, even though it's three points more than before, it's like still an accomplishment, it's all right. And then making the transition from easy to easy to hard is a title there. <laughs> but you know, knowing that you're growing and learning and also the way that you organize your notes. Good questions about math anxiety, thoughts, comments. Like I say, I'm, I feel different. 
you should know. Him, <laughs> he's my uh, tutor here, the trio. And um, when I was in my car bus rollover, I've been in several accidents. None of them was my fault. So my mind had been back and forth and everything else, but no broken bone, just my mind. So when I started coming back, I was like scared. I, you know, asked me a question, I don't know what he was like, yeah. or something like that. But as he, as I progressed with him and saw how patient he was with me, that would let me know I can say anything to him and he wouldn't put me down. And that that really gave me the support. And I thank you for that. You're welcome. And that relationship is important. Not putting anyone else down just because they talk or just being left behind. Yep. Any other comments? Thoughts? So now we're going to do some focusing on like math strategies you can use. I know most of you like already kind of your methods of like study and stuff like that. But you know, it's also look for other things and maybe you might learn something new. So there's like four different things you can look at. We're going to do that pre-reading stuff, uh, homework stuff, note taking, and test study. So you're going to do this in like groups, I guess. So does anyone want to work on their own before we like that first session? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Because there's like four activities and like six of these. So I think, unless, okay, you three could do two and then you three could do like the other two. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to focus on homework, pre reading stuff, test studying, or no reading? Right now, homework. homework. Oh, do you guys want to do test study? Test. Okay. So test study and homework stuff? Oh, yeah. And then you guys are going to do the pre reading and the note taking. So, I guess we can do it. Like a lot of stuff. Anyway. Okay. 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 So, yeah, I'm handing out your uh, Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
and what did you like about what didn't you like about the test study? How can it be improved? It didn't fit your schedule because like she was mentioned the TAs, how they get together, the so students and they have this little study session. But mine was always class schedule. I could never attend one. And then you have compromising. You want to explain that? Compromising. Whatever works, right? Dispatch. What is a, what didn't you like about the uh, test study? I thought you said compromising. But anyway, what compromising? I'll come back to that when I get to it. Uh, the size of the group and the distraction. What are we gonna do now? It's just like summarizes like everything that you went over and then look at the other things. So you guys are the pre-reading or the note-taking, but now just like kind of that's not. Oh, survival tip. What do you do for cartoon characters? I don't know. Rocky Mountain and what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Get away to look for you at home. Do you have that? Do you have any extra videos? I want to keep one. Uh, which one? The test studying notes. Even though this is blank ones. I see. It's on here. Okay. Does anyone have any additional comments they want to make? Like how they study, how they take notes, how they prepare for a class lecture, how they do the homework? I put the negative today. Okay. I hate the uh, like Pearson's book. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that like the math one? Yeah. 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 It's not gonna be that good. Ours says sometimes your answer is 1.423 and the computer is 1.424. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know it just took, it took me 35 minutes to figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. It was frustrating. I don't know if you guys take it. It's like a math program where like you do math homework. And it's like very like picky about the answer. It's super crazy. Like, oh, you know, okay. Instead of turning in homework to the professor, she assigns the homework and you go to it. It's like a website online that everything. You can use when we do that. And the answer is super, super picky on the answers. It'll if you're off by one decimal place, it'll mark you wrong. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be really That's not that. like statistics too. Mm -hmm. Unless they tell you to round up or round down. But even if you make one mistake. In your addition of whatever it is, mm -hmm. it throws it off. Yeah, yeah so it works out. So, this one is like no card. There's two questions I want you to answer just for yourself. If you still write, just one each. The first question is um, How are you going to use one of these strategies in your own class? That's the first question. And then the second question is if it applies to you, how do you plan to approach your math anxiety? If it applies to you. Okay, I got the first one. What's, what's the second one? The second one is how do you plan to approach your math anxiety? And then the first one was. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Sorry. Please. <laughs> Now, what was the question again? How will you use the study one? Like one of these strategies presented in your own class.
What is it called? Math management? It's called the uh, math survival tips. That's the workout thing. You mean some 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 phone, you're right? Yeah. A M K O S I O. Thank you for watching this workshop. Whoever's watching.